for the oh for the benefit of y'all watching on YouTube, I'm making uh, it's gonna be mostly programming day here. I'm working on Z order splitting. You can see it looks really weird when this guy comes up like this. He looks all wrong and everything. I need to make it so there's uh, two different Z order layers that he works on. <clears throat> So it's going to be a lot of programming to get this to work. Well, maybe not a lot, but we'll see. So I'm going to dive in. Uh, okay, so I can kind of get a... Hmm, where to start? Where to start with all this? First of all, I don't think I need to do this Z-order splitting here like this. It's not yet. Wait, wait, wait. What's up, Arcane? Welcome, man. I think this should be always mid. And don't mess with the offset. Let's see what that looks like. What am I up to? Well, let me let me show you what I'm up to. I'm working on Z order splitting. Um, so the art and everything is pretty much done for this this uh, new ice boss guy. Um, except for this little part right there. See how he comes up and... Um, wait, you got sound? Hold on a second, let me show my, make sure my settings are right here. 30 FPS, audio... Yeah, we got music, cool. Can you hear the sound for the game? Yeah, so he's all, he's looking great, he's playing really well, it's super fun boss fight, but the only problem is so far that, um, that one little bit at the very beginning, where he comes up from the, from the depths of the, the like, the sky there, and, <coughs> excuse me, um, he just looks weird. So, the problem is that there's three different Z order layers in Songbringer, there's the very bottom layer, below everything else. There's the middle layer, which is where everything mostly resides, and then there's the top layer, which is above everything else. So he transitions between two different Z order layers as he's coming up. He, he needs to start at the bot at the lowest Z order layer, and then actually no, half of him needs to be but in the lower Z order layer, and then the other the top half of him needs to be in the upper Z order layer. So this is tricky. I need to divide his sprite into two different rectangles and two different textures. Not two different textures, but same texture, just two different texture recs, two different rectangles that are de describing, you know, basically two sprites based on the same texture, splitting those up so that the Z orders are different for each of those sprites. That's today's goal, so we'll see if we can get that done in the next two hours. Okay, so, yeah, we're starting with, I'm starting with what is, is it's called a Z is split. So before we had mid, high, and low, and now there's split. Yeah, it is really complicated. Unfortunately, there's really nothing simpler that I can think of. I thought about this all last night, all this morning. I just dreamed about it mostly. I'm like, mm, no, yes, no. I think this is really this the way to do it without affecting too much else. So yeah, so he's got a special Z order called the split layer, and Okay, I think this is this is easier than it sounds actually. If I go to render system and there's this kind of similar thing where it creates a reflection sprite. Reflections are almost exactly the same kind of thing. They're a copy of the sprite. All right, so then it goes and it runs animate frame. Well, actually, here's where it goes. Reflection sprite, add child. What's up, Big Mac? The game's going great. It's going really, really great. Could you guys hear the sound when I was playing it there a second ago? Let's see if maybe this helps. Oh, yeah, we got sound. Let's make sure this has sound too. How you doing, Big Mac? Okay, 
So yeah, here's how it creates a sprite. Just adds it as a child. Sets its position to halfway through the sprite. Sets its current opacity and all that. So animate frame, interpolate movement. Wait, there's set blend funk as well. Oh my god, this is actually is gonna be pretty damn complicated because there's basically everything that has to happen to the sprite has to happen to its other half hmm well I mean I got two hours here let's see if I can get something to accomplish and if it doesn't work out I can always just stash the git and try it later okay so it animates the frame and Oh yeah, set sprite frame. All right, let's try it out. This is, I think it was the right place to do this. So I'm gonna create the split Z sprite. Um, if uh, this render component has the Z order layer of K Z split, then We'll get the um, the sprite based on a child. <coughs> Whoa! Why am I sneezing? A child by tag. Okay, tag first, fourth, fifth, second, two fifth. All right. Now, if it's null, then we need to create this split sprite. S equals new sprite. Blend. S init. S, oh no, wait, no, we want to do init with texture wait wait you don't have a knit with texture hold on a second render component when it creates the sprite yeah sprite done init with texture Auto completes method mess with me. And it with texture. It doesn't like this. Why doesn't it like this? Oh. That's a node. Get child by tag. There we go. All right, cool. So we're going to use the same texture as the sprite. E dot render dot sprite dot texture. E render dot sprite dot get texture rect. 
e.render sprite is just direct rotated. Add it to the regular sprite as a child. Set its position halfway through. Okay, now that we've created the sprite, if it's not equal to null pointer, then we apply all of the current stuff. Which probably needs to be done Back where we were doing setting reflections to yeah it's a bad idea to uh, add it as a um, like don't store store a pointer I don't know why I was trying to do that save some memory I guess Render component.h. Okay, we need a separate sprite for this. So sprite blend. Split sprite. Back in render component the CPP, this is where it's set, where it goes and it sets up in its sprite. In its sprite, this is where. We're going to add the split sprite. Or maybe that should be in data. Oh yeah, it doesn't know it's the order until it gets to the data. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, so this can't this doesn't belong here. It belongs like here, I guess. Okay, so this is if um, C order layer is K Z split, 
then there's no need to look this all up. It's just uh, render, wait, wait. No, this is, yeah, okay. So this is split sprite equals new sprite blend. Split sprite, knit with texture. And uh, once it's initialized, really can be invisible at first. But otherwise, the split sprite definitely needs. Okay, it is null. All right. Okay, we've created the split sprite, I think, in the right place. Now it just needs to go to the render system. And whenever we set the split sprites frame, e render dot split sprite is not equal to null. We want to set the frame and the flip X. Oh, Boris and Bell, nine points. Sorry, man. <laughs> Buffo Buffo's been doing that lately, giving people like under ten points. It's hilarious to to some people, I guess. Okay, so now we've got the split sprite created and now we've got it mirroring the parent's sprite frame. So far, it should still be invisible and it should only be applicable for some, this one entity right here, just this guy. Okay, so nothing has crashed or anything so far and everything still is kind of operating as it was. So I think the next thing now is to make it start to work. So when, whenever, whenever the sprite moves, wherever it sets its Z order actually, I think that's, it. yeah, I well, guess it would be, yeah, it would be here in interpolate movement where it calls like set auto Z. Here's where it moves the shadow and here's where it moves the reflection. And here's where it moves the dialogue. This is the perfect place to do this. Okay. So move, uh, move the split sprite. So if you have a split sprite, you need to render dot split sprite. First thing, um, So we gotta set it to be visible. Actually, maybe not. That's probably a that's probably really inefficient to do that every single. Yeah, let's just keep it visible at first and let's see what happens with it like that. Okay, same thing, cool, he's still there. I don't know what, let's, what 
if he was like a weird color. Try and or e to render dot split sprite set position x zero. It should offset it weirdly. So I'm just trying to verify if we even have this right on the screen yet. If it's working for this particular guy. No. No. What? Hold on. Is it even creating this? Looks like it. Is it for only this one guy? Ice boss. Yep. Just that one guy. He's got it. Okay, cool. That's verified. But how do I get this on the where where the hell is it? Hmm, oh wait, I forgot about global Z order. Let's try setting the global Z order the same thing. Oh, and the camera mask. Those two things are critical. Probably was it. Oh, poo. Nothing. Where are you? Yet another thing to make it obvious. Let's do color. Green. It's just weird color. No luck. What's up? What's up with this? Does this occur? Hey, what's up, T? Welcome, man. Yeah, okay, it's getting there. Setting the sprite frame. Still, I think it's going to be invisible though. There's something I'm missing here. Something missing. What is it? What is it? Is it visible? I guess that's probably one of the first things you should check. Said visible, true. No, 
help. Uh, position. Global Zealer. Shit. Where art thou? Wait, what if, what if it's, um, this might have to do with his initial position and the way he moves up his Z. Um, let's see, create AI. So there, now he won't move upward. Maybe that's, that's something to do with it. I'm going to disable his reflection momentarily because those you are on D at death, those flip X can't sink. We still got nothing. Oh, the basic sprite stuff like this, things get really complicated when you have a bajillion different layers and cameras and stuff. Why is this sprite invisible? Is this, uh, where are you? Okay, let me sure, make sure I'm mimicking everything that the reflection sprite does. Add it as a child. We set the position, set the sprite frame, set flip X. Set opacity, I guess. What is it? What is it? So if you're, let me just try and reiterate what I'm doing here. Maybe that'll help me trigger my memory. Um, I'm trying to split the sprite. Sometimes, if a if an entity has this special command here, of the order layer of split, it needs to take its its sprite, whatever it is, and split it into two different sections. So it's taking the same texture and using a sprite for the top half of the texture. Sprite for the bottom half of the texture. The bottom half has a different Z order, different global Z order, so that it can slide nicely into the ground and behind things that are already at a low, low Z order. So, I've created the sprite. I know it exists for that, that second half. But it's apparently invisible.
What if it's uh Could be the parent. Oh, for fuck's sake. I didn't add it as a child. All right, okay, sprite dot add child, split sprite, split sprite release. Hopefully this is it, if it's not. Yes, oh, there it is. All right, we're back at business. Titties. Okay, let's get rid of that. Don't need it to be, well, we can keep it green, weird, weirdly green for a moment. Okay, so this is interpolate movement. Set sprite frame. Set position X. Actually, yeah, that could just be render component. So now I'm trying to center this right in the middle. Cool. Okay, now we've got it centered. Very nice. The next thing I need um, to set the anchor point. to 0 0.5, 1.0, so it's attached to the top, but it needs, it doesn't need to be f flipped. Yeah, okay, cool. We got him like that now. Um, next step, next step is to try out the whole texture rec splitting. Okay.
and O, and we don't want it to be flip Y. And the global Z ordering is going to be a little different. Yeah, okay, cool. We got that split up now. Okay, so the next step is just to make it so, depending on how much of the entity is below the Z0, that's how much gets just split in different textures. So it's okay to go and re-enable the movement. Now let's see the texture splitting. Man, getting closer than I thought it would be. It's nice to get past the initial little snafus and weird things that stop you from making progress. Um, so yeah, it's good to be out in the clear almost. It's like I'm a freaking I'm a wide receiver in the clear. Bam! Caught the ball and I'm running for the, the goal. Yes! Oh, the goal! Sweet goal! I'm gonna do the dance. All right, so if we have the move, the move split sprite, then depending on the Z, so. Auto rect is e dot ren no 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 yeah wait no yeah render dot split sprite get texture rect now the rect it's gonna have like a height might be rotated oh we can't allow rotation let's fix that rotation it would be oh my god rotation makes things really annoying. So I gotta make sure in the sprite sheet it's not allowing rotations. Okay, good. Disabled that a while ago. Nice, nice, nice. Uh, so yeah, so there's so a texture rect is gonna have a certain height, and it just needs to be subtracted, like for for this entity, we need to subtract out there's like a split point int split whatever int split is L round F E position pause Z. Uh huh. Oh. We need to make sure we're using the original, the original sprite frames texture rect. So man. Okay, original rect is, I think, get sprite frame, which is an expensive function. 
I don't want to call this too much. That's why I was kind of like, meh. It's really not as simple as it seems what's going on behind the scenes there. Uh, but... That should be the original rect. And then auto r is rig rect r dot origin dot y. What's up, Sal Dogs? How you doing, man? Welcome. R dot origin dot y plus equals split. Make that float actually. It's going good, man. Working on some programming today. I got. Uh, I'm just working on. Uh, here, let's see. Let me show you. I'm working on uh, splitting every. Well, not every sprite, but if a, if an entity has a certain z order parameter, it will split its its texture into two different sprites so that one of them can render on the regular z order layer and another one can render on the, a lower z order layer. So what you see here with the green sprite is the, the copy. So that's the, gonna be the lower Z order sprite. And um, when, when it, whenever an entity uses that split Z, depending on the entity's Z position, it will actually split up that into two different textures and one of them will render behind everything, one of them will render normally. So that it will look really smooth. That the goal is for, it to, for him to look really smooth and awesome as he comes out of the sky. It's like a, it's a lot of work just to make this guy look good, but it's it's kind of the limitations of the engine that I've written here with how it does Z ordering. It's not quite perfect, but also what this will help is it will help other entities look better with reflections too, because reflections need to be based on that Z ordering too. So if an entity is partially below ground, that only the part that's above ground needs to be reflected. So this kind of will be a good thing all around. So I can use this for, and it, and it's also, it's kind of a complex system so far, but like it's only enabled for certain entities. So it's not gonna be too much of a performance hit or anything. So let's see, yeah, so now I've got the original rectangle. Let's, I'm adding the Y split, taking away or yeah, r dot size dot height minus equals split, and then setting this thumb texture rect. Set texture rect r. Uh huh. Yeah. Oh, so yeah. I don't know. I know it's kind of hard to explain, but when I when it all, uh, it should become a little more apparent once it's all. Once I, in, a, in a few moments, it really all, I'll almost have this. Okay. What was it doing there? That was really weird. It like showed the X. What is, what is going on here? Oh, oh, I think this might need to be minus equals split. I don't know. Ship it. <laughs> What's up, clock? Because, um, yeah, sprites are flipped. Yeah, depending. OpenGL has sprites a certain way. Whoa, that was weird. But I think it was more of what up was. Let's take a look at this, this texture one more time. Yeah, so as he's coming, working as intended. 
completely working as intended. Yeah, so this is zero up here on the top. And this would be one. Well, or 12 or 16 or whatever. Um, so I want to take the, the, the Y. Oh, the Y stays the same. No wonder. I'm like, why is this looking all glitchy? Because the Y stays the same. Okay, so the height minus the split. Thanks, Clock. Yeah, the animations, I'm really happy with them too. Yeah. This guy turned out way better than I thought he would. Oh, no, that was, that was still broken. Um, so the, uh, the, the height, the split... Oh, this is negative. It should be fabs. Or abs. L round F. Fabs F. Come on. Come on. Yes. Yes! Oh, that's it! Awesome! Okay, cool. So, yep. Start the queen. No, that is kind of still wrong. Oh, that's the, the opposite. The other one needs the one. Uh, I'll, I'll get it here in a second. I'm sure I will. Okay, let's start playing with the other sprite, um, or the main sprite. Yeah, if I can get the main sprite to work right, it should be pretty easy to get the other sprite to work right. So, R equals a rig rect. And then we're eventually going to set this, the rect for the main sprite. Free parking. What's up, Oni River? The bed. You won a lot more than the than the than all horse and bell did. Gosh, I pity the person that wins less than ten points. It's like a, it's, it's kind of funny, but at the same time, it's kind of pitiful. Pitiful, pitiful, Badfu. Come on, Badfu. But still, but it's funny. I can't tell Badfu to stop when it's funny. All right, so it's original wrecked. So we need to chop off the bottom of the sprite based on the Z position. So if the Z is like negative 10, we're going to take away 10 pixels from the texture rect of the main sprite. And it's simply going to add to the Y r.origin.y plus equals split and subtract from the height size dot height minus equals split. That should be it. And then set the texture reg. Okay, let's see if that works. So this should this should make the his sprite should grow. He should have a tiny head at first and she get he should get bigger, bigger, bigger. Nope. It's it's something's backwards, but that was kind of the right idea. Let's see that in slow-mo, okay. still lining at the bottom and then it's still, it's just filling up the top so it's not the It can't be minus equals. 
can it? What's up, Space My Name? How you doing today? No, see, that's just totally messed up. Yeah, okay, it's not that. Is it leaving it alone? Uh, it's complex when there's, when everything's, you know, OpenGL, Y is one way. Coco City X, Y is another way. Yes, oh, that was it. Nice. So just leave the origin alone. Subtract from the height. What's going on today is Z order splitting. I'm splitting, I'm, I'm adding the ability to the game engine um, for, for a sprite to have two different, well, uh, it has the same texture, but two different sprites, so that when it's below, when it's partially below ground, one of the sprites can render below everything, and then one of the sprites can render above everything. And this will help things to look right, of course, but it will also help the reflections to look right, too, so. It's, uh, it's kind of a necessity here, so at, so to get this entity, to get the, the boss to look right, coming out of the clouds right there, I need to split a sprite. It's kind of compl complicated, um, but I think in the end this effect will be worth it. I hope it's worth it. So yeah, let's see that again, slow, a little slower. I want to make sure that that's the right effect. Yeah, it's the right effect, it's just that it needs... It can't move its Y. It can't move the sprite's Y position if the Z is split. So where does it move the Y? The it's in, yeah, it's right here in this function, interpolate movement, pause dot y plus equals z, see that's it right there. Float z. Yeah, so if e dot render dot split sprite is null. So if we're not splitting the sprite as we usually would, where we add to the entities y pos how, how did I just lose my assistant editor? Oh well. Bye assistant editor! See ya! Flow z, zero, and then here Z is something. Reflection. Yeah. Okay. Let's hope that works. Yes, yes, yes! Oh, nice! Nice! That was awesome. Getting a weird jittery stuff going on with the reflection spray. But all this could be fixed. Yeah, I want to see that again. That was so awesome. So the top half worked. The bottom half in green, that's not working yet. But the top half is working. So that's exactly what I was trying to ha trying to get to happen. See how the top half of him is above ground, and the bottom half of him is below ground. This is exactly what I want. I want half that texture to start to appear and move like that, and the bottom half, the green part. Now, now I'm gonna start working on that so that the green part is the bottom half, and that always appears below ground, and it also has. A, a, just, um, Changes its texture rect.
I think this needs to be plus equals split there. Was that close at the beginning? Can't tell. I gotta see a slow mo. Happens too fast. Too fast for my little brain to comprehend. Right? This okay, so his nostril is about right there. That was not. Uh, no, I don't think that's even right. This seems totally wrong to try it this way. All right. Ah. Uh. Oh. It might need to be r dot origin dot y plus equals R dot size dot height minus split and then minus equals R dot size dot height minus split. This is uh, the WTF method of doing math. You just do some math and then say WTF. What the fuck? Oh, hey, wait, that worked. Ah. WTF method sometimes works. See? You get it eventually. You don't need to know math. Right? Yeah, yeah, basically, basically, yes, yes. They're like aligned wrong. But that is exactly the concept. This is exactly what needs to happen here. Okay, yeah. cool. Let's get to an align correctly. What's wrong with the alignment? Okay, I think I'll start with it being in the right Z order layer, actually. So we don't need that, we don't need that. Set a global Z order, negative 1,000. I should put it below the, the, cr the clouds and stuff. Yeah. Oh yeah. Nice. Uh -huh. Okay. Um. Right. If it just if it wasn't green and it was aligned correctly, it would be perfect. The X. Maybe that bugs the X off slightly. Is it the, one, the Y is off too? Oh, why is it jittering and stuff too?
get some size I just want to vent about how much I hate Emacs. No worries, man. Go ahead, vent away. Why do you hate Emacs? What's up, Clone Geek? Uh, Reflection of Sprite. Set texture rec. Bar. You're being forced to use it because you want to use org mode. What's org mode? What's up, Ray, bro? I don't know. Okay, I'm going to turn this back so it looks really crazy ugly so I can see more what's going on oh mono game right yeah what's up wish this though it's still off why is it off That's really, really weird. No, 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 flips table. What's up with me? I'm working on some splitting, splitting Z ordering. Open a new buffer, it covers the current window instead of opening a new window, except when it doesn't. Oh. Yeah, I really hate engines that use UI too, Ray Bro. That's why I don't use Unity. I hate Unity. I hate all engines that don't that have UIs for sure, man. Same way, same thing here. Yep, me too. That's why I love to code with X with with like Coco Studio X or any other engine that doesn't have a UI. Uh, okay. Oh man, this is almost almost working. Um, why? Uh, maybe it's the like... I guess I can try setting the position right here just to double check it oh we don't need that or that we using vim nice Yeah, I'm using Vim. I've been using Vim for the, like the last year. Oh man, uh, 
this. Okay, if I don't do any of this stuff, Space Max Evil Mode, huh? Yeah, okay, something happens when I set the texture wrecked. It messes everything else up. Darth Vader sounds. Yeah. Yeah, I do use Vim. I don't know. I'm not using Vim right here. This is Xcode. But yeah, in the on the command line, I use Vim. Vim, -bidi Vim, 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 Vim. I'm typing stuff in Vim. I'm so awesome that I know how to type things in Vim, and I'm so awesome that I know how to close Vim. Closing Vim is the hardest thing in the world. For, for newbies. For me, actually. Oh, there's just a mill, yeah. Yeah, what's the other one, though? What's the other? Oh, there's BFX. If you haven't heard of BFX, there's that, too. No, not Buffixer. I think it's called BFX. Maybe not. It might not be called BFX. <laughs> I don't know. I forgot what it's called. There's something with the B in it. It's like a new... I think it's C++. No. So it's not C Sharp. Interface directly with the OS and write your game engine in machine language. SDL is good too, yeah. Oh, oh really? I didn't know SDL was like that compared to SFML. Okay, so if I if this is normal, or does this work normally? Yeah, I think it does. Yeah, okay, here's what it's like normally. The second I go and try and set his texture rect. Okay, so this, yeah, the second I go and set the texture rect, everything breaks. Oh, SDL's written in C as well? Nice! Oh. Seven pixels to the right. If I go backwards, yeah, the position is perfect. So it looks like the second I go and change the texture rect even slightly, it messes with messes with it.
Uh, this is harder than I thought it would be. Halfway up Meru. I'm going to take a quick break. I'll be right back. I'm get a drink of water. Think about this. Hmm. Okay. Um, I'm thinking. Just trying to 
force the position of the the x position Oh, it worked! Oh, that was awesome! Oh, yeah! Maybe it works for the reflection too. Oh, reflection that's right. That's that position X. Come on, work. Super weird flickery. What's up with you, super weird flickeriness? Yo, Boogie! What's up, man? Hey, we, um, yeah, thanks, man. We've been laughing all week at, at Bot Fu when he gives people less than 10 points. Like, Teak got like seven points. If you're like seven points, and then and then like Zilton got eight points. It's funny, so hilarious. Oh yeah, the original sprite. What was the original sprite? This is so funny. Let me show you this. This is hilarious. Ice boss. Here is. The original sprite. <laughs> oh, you saw it? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, this is it, man. It's the original. It's the OG Ice Boss right here. It was like this for at least 15 minutes, too. Had a short life, but it was a sweet life. He made love. He had little baby dinosaur dragons. Um, he fought bravely in a battle with another dragon. And one, and um, yeah, and then he went back into his kids' painting world and lived happily ever after. And his name was was Jared. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, what I'm working on today is splitting the Z ordering and stuff. Um, I'm trying to fix this one last little bug here, where it might be that actually that the the split is higher than the rec. The um. Yeah, it might be that split needs to be clamped. Clamp between split zero. And max would be a rig rect dot size dot height. That might work. You ever imagination friend name start with J? Mine is Jim. Because he hates Jeff. You know what? What is it with about the J? You're right, man. There's a lot of imaginary friends with the name J something. 
Okay, so I'm really curious as to what's going on when, when a fireball or a wise ball lands and then it shakes the screen and the green sprite goes crazy weird. See, it's like one frame. Even if I slow down time, Oh, okay, so that's a big clue. It's only one frame, it's not one tick or whatever. So that means that it's like I'm not initialized. Oh. It's when it sets the texture. Yeah, or just J, right, yeah, there you go, nice. Drama alert, ah. <laughs> I've never seen that spelled that way, but that's so funny. Drama with the J. All right, I think this is what it is. It's um texture rect. It says sets in and set sprite frame. Yeah. Here it is. Split sprites frame. Get the old split flight split. Yeah, render dot split sprite. Get texture wrecked. And then Set texture rect. Which, which would be the... It doesn't even need to set the spray, frame, really. Hope this works. Yeah, it worked! Holy moly. Freaking worked. And I guess the same thing here with the... With the reflection. Did you just say one million? Yeah! One million hype! Hype! It's so cool. Love SGDQ and AGDQ. Dear Force, tell me they're playing Super Metroid right now. It's like my favorite game ever. Dear Force! You remember when it was day 91? I remember your name from back then, Ray Bro. Yep. Yeah. That's right. It's, it's been a lot of days, but these are just these are just development days. They're not actual days. This is like it should be called episode 91, episode 394. But instead, I decided to confuse everybody and call it day 91. Yes, yeah, a clone geek. I'm hoping for that. I'm so hoping for that. Oh, it's going to be up in two hours? God damn it, why do they got to do it right then, huh? When you're going to be sleeping? Bastards. So today's, so it's Saturday night at like, okay, so it's like a Saturday night thing for, for the United States. They always play the good guys in the middle of the night? They do, huh? Bastards. Bastards. So we kind of need a wrecked here. Wrecked, get wrecked. Wrecked R. Zero, 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 zero.
R equals reflection dot sprite, which is Crystal's ponytail, which is of course the second greatest game of all time. The greatest game being Alf. Uh. What the hell is Crystal's ponytail? I've never heard of that either. Oh, this is Genesis. <laughs> this, is, this is awesome. <laughs> awesome. Oh my god, look at these graphics. Uh, yeah. Look at this. It's flying off the edge of the map. What is it? What's he doing right here? What, or her? What's she doing? You make making obnoxious noises. <laughs> they actually played this? Oh, that's great. Okay, I've never seen ALF. Never seen the ALF game. What, eight minutes, right? It probably is, huh? Oh my god, I've got to see this. i got to see this playthrough. I'm going to go check that out. This is like... Maniac Ma Mansion, but with Alf in it? Please hit the space bar. Hit the space bar? What are you talking about? This is, is this, this supposed to be the computer version. Oh, it's just like a master system. We actually had one of these when I was a kid. We had the Sega Master System. The first adventure, 1988. This is the best I'll play through. <laughs> he compressed it. Oh man, I can't wait to check it out. Say texture reg R. Okay, let's see if that fixes that whole glitch. Visual glitch. Okay, come on, come on. Let's see when he hits the the fire the ice ball. Okay, no, he's still jittering the reflection sprite. Why? Why is it why is it jiggering the reflection sprite? Oh, I might not have actually said it here. Oh, I did, I already did that. What if... Huh, what if we... Don't even set it. The reflection's not empty. And... The split sprite is null.
out later. Let's see if the whole idea works in general. The general idea is for this color, this to not be green, for it to have a Z order below everything else, so that as he comes up out of the clouds, you can see part of him behind the bricks and part of him in front of the bricks. Kind of, no. Why was it darker? Finally get something working and then you find out that it might not actually be able to work. Oh, yeah. What's up, Bafu? Alright, maybe maybe I'll just get him working again with his his behavior. He's not shooting anymore. Why is he not shooting? Timer's lesson. Oh, and he set a timer. Timer zero point five. I mean, it's, it kind of looks better than it did, I guess. Didn't jitter the reflection sprite, it would look better, of course. You're still not doing your thing, man. Do your thing. Oh, it jitters the sprite even when I do the, the blink. Oh man, it's like this whole this solution has added more problems. Than anything. Timer zero point five. Why can't it do? Shield up if mode two timers less than zero. Oh, I think this needs to be a timer none or timer begin. Oh, there, now he's working again. Alright, cool. Besides the jitter, at least he's working as he used to. How about it automatically removes the split sprite when it's done with it? And this is kind of a bad idea, but... Yeah, I know. I thought about making his eye follow rock, but, and it's like... Eh. It's way more, it's way harder than, it's, than it sounds. Because look at I mean just look at uh, already he's he's dominating an entire sprite sheet because he's so big. So if I were to make him have custom animations and have his eye following rock and stuff, 
that's like another day of development. And I don't really have another day of development right now. So I got to, I got to kind of like <laughs> put that idea on the back burner. Yeah. It's more work than it's worth. Yeah. So I just, I did, I, I thought about that and I kind of drew him with different, his eyes looking around a little bit, but like, yeah. Yeah, I know, but to make his eye a separate entity would also be a shitload of work because of just how much how many animations he already has with the eye. And then getting those two things to sync up correctly would also be a lot of work. So, all in all, it's a hell of a lot of work for very little payoff. Just one one enormous texture. But I can't use I can't use textures bigger than 2K or 2048 by 2048 because uh, then the game can't run on iPad, old iPads or old phones. So yeah, I know it's got to be I gotta have max textures 2000 by 2000. One point one the eye patch. <laughs> Oh yeah, I know you're kidding. I know you're kidding. So what if what if he just loses his if uh if wait wait if the position dot pause dot z is greater than zero, let's just delete the sprite. See if everything goes back to normal. Yeah, everything 4S and above does, but things um, below that don't. And the iPad 1 doesn't. Oh yeah, it does work. Okay, so if I, I can I can remove the sprite and then everything can go back to normal. That's cool. Use that effect for, to start with. Oh wait, no, the reflection messed up. Oh, well, this is, this is a tough day, man. This is a really complicated, tough situation to try and get that this guy to look right as he comes up. Maybe he shouldn't even come up. Maybe he should just stay up the whole time. It'd be a hell of a lot easier than all this. But I think I think I can I think I can incorporate this into a new kind of system. Let's see this one more time. Slow mo. Yeah, they'll have enough pixel fill rate. Yeah, the iPad one. I've I've written games for iPad one before, and I've, this game is not that much different. This game is actually simpler than the other games I made. In fact, this game is so simple because it has a very very small back buffer. So. That makes it really easy for it to, for old devices to support this. It's basically the, it's basically playing it's basically rendering everything to a very very tiny screen like a Game Boy style screen, and then um, and then just filling and just basically scaling that tiny back buffer upwards. So where does the reflection get off? Where does the reflection stop working? Slow down time. And why, uh, and why is that separate sprite not look right? Oh, there. The second I delete that reflection sprite.
Yeah, totally. Uh, might be. Yeah, you might be right about that, Wissa. So, yeah, and I'm not sure. I'm not exactly sure there. Oops. Still didn't work. Didn't set that sprite correctly. Second's done, it's just that's a weird. <sighs> well, I don't know what to do now. I mean, this 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 effect kind of works, but it kind of really doesn't. It adds a lot of complexity. So my choices here are like, okay, do I do I try and fix it? Do I try and get it to work perfectly and look right? Or do I try and come up with a simpler solution, like maybe he doesn't come up out of the clouds, or maybe I continue having, using, um, is, uh, animate, using an animation to, to do it instead of, a instead of actually moving the sprite. So, yeah, I guess I gotta just take a break, man, and think about this, get some dinner, and, like, decide what's the best way to do this. Like, continue on with this complicated system, which might look better if I can get it to work perfectly. But I'm not sure if I can. No, I can. I can definitely get it to work perfectly if I work long enough at this, but it might be sort of expensive. It might be expensive development-wise to, like, spend the next day trying to get this effect to work perfectly just for, just for this guy appearing. So yeah, my choices are, do I continue with this complicated system that might look better, or do I go back to the, a simpler system and forget all about this complicated system maybe? I don't know. Decide later, I guess. So, what are the other bosses that are planned? Oh, you really want me to tell you a ruined surprise? Uh, I'll, t I'll tell you a few bosses that are planned. There's going to be one boss that's a big old giant tongue, and he's made up of lots of different pieces. So he's got one, pe one piece, of his piece of his tongue is like really big, and then the other pieces of his tongue get smaller and smaller. And the tongue can move around. Um, uh, in a chain, so at, it, it like can move the end of the chain to move the rest of the tongue. So it'll be pretty cool. And it's an acid tongue, so it's like this big old tongue that like shoots out acid at you and you get hurt from it. Um, there is one boss I've got planned. There's a lot of other bosses too. The alpha seems kind of high. What do you mean by the alpha seems kind of high? Uh, well, so yeah, that's it for, to, for the rest of the, for today. So, um, yeah, I'm gonna take a break and think about my options here. What's, which way to go? Ditch this system. Stay with the simpler system. Finish this complicated system. I don't know. So yeah, thanks for watching everybody, and uh, we'll see you later.